Good happy Tuesday morning. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Tuesday morning, so let's begin. It's February 4th, 2020. First up, Iowa Democratic Party gives a statement on results delay. Campaigns respond. As the Iowa caucuses got underway Monday night, a new polling system was unveiled through an app. However, the Iowa Democratic Party quickly realized there was an error within the program. As candidates took the stage to address their supporters between 10 p.m. and midnight, the results had still not been posted. At 1 p.m. Tuesday, the Iowa Democratic Party hosted a conference call for media regarding the results delay. During the phone call, Chairman Troy Price said the following statement, and here's that following statement for all of you. And here's this following statement here. And if you want to read this following statement again, we will share it with you on the Riley King Network Facebook page after the broadcast. Former Vice President Joe Biden, here's what he said in this is his statement here. Here's what Bernie Sanders said. Here's what Donald Trump said. And if you want to read this article, we will share it with you right after our broadcast. Big Caucus Turnout and delays reported in multiple Iowa communities. Turnout technical issues led to delays at some locations. Let's take a listen to that video from WNUR News 9, Adam Sexton. Customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltate's Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Tom, we had a delay at the location we were at for the caucus as well. That would be Hoover High School in northwest Des Moines, a suburban neighborhood. A lot of people there, 522 showed up, so that registration process took a little while. But it's important to note, what we saw there at Hoover High School was just a microcosm of that particular precinct and neighborhood, not necessarily indicative, perhaps, of what's going on statewide. What did go down there was this, a very strong showing in this location for Bernie Sanders, where we were. Also, Amy Klobuchar had a surprisingly strong amount of support. She had more people turn out for her at our location in northwest Des Moines than Joe Biden did. The former VP did not reach the 15% threshold for viability at our location, which we are hearing anecdotally was a bit of a problem for him in Des Moines, but again, might not be indicative of his performance statewide. But things looked very good for Sanders, and we did spoke, speak to one of his volunteers between the first and second alignments. Yeah, I thought it went really, really well. Uh, um, out of the gate, felt really strong, um, which is, we kind of expected that. Um, we need 20 more people, I think. We'll get that extra number, but... Uh, Great showing for this side of town. So, you know, Precinct 16 always held up pretty well. So, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. 
The final delegate allocation from where we were in northwest Des Moines was four for Sanders, four for Buttigieg, four for Amy Klobuchar, and three for Elizabeth Warren. So those results are in, and that particular precinct, again, as you heard, Tom, it's taking a lot longer statewide under this new system, uh, about which there was quite a bit of grumbling tonight from the Iowa caucus goers. Reporting live in Des Moines, Adam Sexton, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Trump wins 2020 Iowa Republic caucuses. Let's take a listen to that video from KCCI Des Moines 8 CBS News. Bernie Sanders is on our side, and always has been, fighting to protect a woman's right to choose. Some uh, Republican caucus members as well, or shall we move along? There we go. The Iowa Republican caucus numbers are right there with 85% of the precincts reporting in. As expected, President Donald Trump wins this evening the Iowa caucuses with 97% of the vote. Okay, and there you go. Three candidates target New Hampshire instead of Iowa. Bennett, Gabbard, and Patrick focus on Granite State on caucus night. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Jessica Moran. At Whitelands Community College, I am working with under sir. Tonight, I was late. I was delayed because of the air, airplane coming back from uh, from Washington. Fresh from the impeachment trial in D.C., Colorado Senator Michael Bennett speaking in a town hall at Manchester Community College, choosing to skip Iowa on caucus night. The expense of the caucus there, just I had to make a decision, and my decision for the last months has been really to be here. Also in Manchester, Tulsi Gabbard, the Hawaii congresswoman, met with voters at Portland Pie Company. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here because those undecided voters are coming to our town halls, having visited with many of the other candidates to be able to make that final decision. When asked how the Iowa caucus results will change the dynamic in the race, Tulsi said her priority is the Granite State. I'm frankly not focused on that. It is truly New Hampshire voters who are famously independent and not uh, swaying to whatever other external forces may be saying they should do. Earlier in Hanover, former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick addressed why he skipped Iowa. Primaries are different. Um, I respect uh, the caucus system in, uh, in Iowa, but I have to respect that schedule and its uh, complexity. And here is where uh, um, we're placing a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, effort, a lot of money, and, uh, and a, lot of, a lot of hope. And soon all of the other candidates are going to come rushing back to New Hampshire. Michael Bennett joked that he didn't want them to come back because he's largely had the state to himself here for a while. But he did say he feels his campaign has a good head start here in the Granite State. In Manchester, Jessica Miranda, BMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And let's take a look at your 2020 New Hampshire candidate tracker for February 4th, 2020. We have a bunch of candidates in New Hampshire today. The first candidate we will be talking about, Jill Biden. He has two events today in New Hampshire. His first event, Get Out the Vote event in Nashua, New Hampshire, to be announced. His second event, Get Out the Vote event in Concord, New Hampshire, to be announced. Pete Buttigieg, he has five events today in New Hampshire. His first event, Town Hall, at the Rex Theater in Manchester, New Hampshire, at 9.30 a.m. 
His second event, meet and greet at the community event in Hampton Ranch at 12 p.m. His third event, town hall at 3 Est Art Space in Portsmouth, New Hampshire at 1.30 p.m. His fourth event, Town Hall at Laconia Middle School in Laconia, New Hampshire at 5 p.m. In his fifth event, Town Hall at the Concord City Auditorium in Concord, New Hampshire at 7 p.m. Tulsi Gabber, she has two events today in New Hampshire. Her first event, Town Hall at Nashua Public Library in Nashua, New Hampshire at 2.15 p.m. Her second event, Town Hall at Litchfield, New Hampshire at 6 p.m. Amy Columbulcher has three events today in New Hampshire. Her first event, event in Concord, New Hampshire to be announced. Her second event in Portsmouth, New Hampshire to be announced. And her third event in Nashua, New Hampshire to be announced. Devolo Patrick had three events today in New Hampshire. His first event, speaking at an assembly at Manchester High School in Manchester, New Hampshire at 9.30 a.m. His second event, tour of New England Carpenters Training Center in Manchester, New Hampshire at 12 p.m. And his third event, UNH Conversation at UNH in Durham, New Hampshire at 6 p.m. Bernie Sanders has one event today, Rally at the Hampshire Hills Athletic Club in Milford, New Hampshire at 6.30 p.m. Elizabeth Warren has one event today in New Hampshire, Town Hall at the Colonial Theater in Keene, New Hampshire at 11.15 a.m. Andrew Yang has three events today in New Hampshire. His first event, Town Hall at Colby Sawyer in New Loudoun, New Hampshire at 12 p.m. His second event, Town Hall at Lakes Region Community College in Laconia, New Hampshire at 2.30 p.m. And his third event, Town Hall at in Lebanon, New Hampshire at 7.30 p.m. And those are all the candidates in New Hampshire today. It's going to be a busy day there. More details really about VP Mike Pence's visit to New Hampshire next Monday. Pence to speak at Cox for Trump event in Portsmouth. Let's take a listen to that video from WNUR News 9. At Bell Tates, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Bell Tates Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. News 9 has learned Vice President Mike Pence will be visiting the Granite State one week from today. That's the day before the primary. He's scheduled to speak during a Cops for Trump event in Portsmouth. He is then expected to appear at President Trump's rally that same night in Manchester. Well, we have you covered both on air and online leading up to the first in the nation primary. Be sure to visit the politics section of WMUR.com for everything you need to know about the candidates and the issues before heading to the polls. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Celebration of life held for fallen Virginia police officer, New Hampshire native. Officer Katie Stein leaves behind two-year-old daughter, Reagan. Let's take a listen to that video from WNUR News 9, Mike Cronin. Sanders is on our side and always has been fighting to protect a woman's right to choose. A community in Virginia is saying goodbye to the New Hampshire native who served them and was killed in the line of duty. It was very evident that there was something special about her and you could tell that she truly cared. 
Over the weekend, Alvern High School graduate Katie Thine was laid to rest in Lowell, Massachusetts, where she was born. The 24-year-old Navy veteran was deeply loved and respected by family and friends in New England and her colleagues in Newport News, Virginia. She did it with courage and dedication. During a celebration of life tonight in Virginia, American flags were given to her family. Please know that we grieve with you. A video was played showing the night Katie received her police badge barely a year ago. And there's that smile, the smile that those who knew her will never forget. Katie's name will be etched on marble and granite on several memorials. However, her name will be etched on our hearts, for it is not how Katie died, it's how she lived. Katie leaves behind her two-year-old daughter, Reagan, fellow officers promising to always be there for her. I'm so glad that you're in this world so that Katie can live on through you. Thank you for being here, as it feels like your mommy is with us through you. Such an emotional evening, and there continues to be an outpouring of love. Hundreds of elementary school students in Newport News signed cards and tied them to tissues for Katie's colleagues. Tonight, officers thanking everyone across the country for their continued support. Tom. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Officials warn about thin ice ahead of ice fishing derby. Great Meredith Rotary Ice Fishing Derby set for this coming Saturday. Let's take a listen to that video from WNUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. At Beltades, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltades Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. We have to be careful. We have to pay attention to it, yeah. Bob Meichroll has fished from this Bob house for 13 years. So far this season, he's moved it twice because of thin ice and is going to move it again. Just be careful. You don't want to have 20 people in one spot, right next to the lodge. Just this past weekend, two four-wheelers went through thin ice on Alton Bay. Things were okay Saturday and Sunday for the pond hockey tournament in Meredith. But Fire Chief Ken Jones says he's worried about the upcoming Rotary Ice Fishing Derby. I, I can't tell you that the ice conditions are safe throughout. Uh, I certainly want any individual that is uh, going to make entry onto the ice, no matter which pond or lake it is, that they are certainly testing it as they uh, move forward. New Hampshire Fish and Game officials say there should be at least six inches of solid ice before you walk on it, and at least eight to ten inches before you use an ATV or a snow machine. Always avoid open water and inlets and don't gather in large groups. Great Meredith Rotary Ice Fishing Derby Chairperson Heidi Barrett Kitchen says they have 5,000 people registered for the event this coming weekend, but those anglers can drop their lines at any freshwater body in the state. Barrett Kitchen says, as always, their biggest concern is safety. Of course, I hope people use their common sense. This is our 41st year. Um, it's a lot of people come year after year after year, so they know that what, how to fish and what the conditions are and where to fish safely. As you heard from Mike, it looks like this warmish early February weather is at least going to continue for a short time, and that is obviously not going to help these ice conditions. Putting live in Mandy Hirschberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video in that report. U.S. features point to Wall Street rally as virus appears about. U.S. stock index 
features were sharply higher on Tuesday morning as fears ease over an economic fallout from the coronavirus outbreak. One killed, five critically injured when truck strikes students. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. We are following a terrible scene unfolding in Moore, Oklahoma tonight. Police say at least five children were struck by a pickup truck near a high school this afternoon. At least one child has died, others critically wounded. The driver, authorities say, did not stop. Here's ABC's Ariel Reshef. Tonight, horror unfolding in this suburban neighborhood in Moore, Oklahoma. They are requesting multiple units. Multiple kids have been run over by a car. Just as the local high school was letting out, a red pickup truck barreling down the street plowing into a group of students, all part of the cross-country team. Quarters where need several ambulances. Two or three started this way. At least one student killed. Another five hit. Three students critically injured. Classmates witnessing the terrifying scene. He was screaming and crying, um, trying to help as much as he could. Police say the suspect fled the scene, caught a few blocks away, seen here given a field sobriety test and taken into custody. David, those students were rushed to the trauma center in Oklahoma City. The investigation just beginning tonight. David. Ariel, thank you. Hi, everyone. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast. Right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.